So in this video, we'll be seeing about the nomenclature of tooth, dental formula, continued by a detailed explanation on the tooth numbering systems. First coming to the nomenclature of teeth. We have specific terms which you have to know in the nomen first. First is the, the term is maxilla mandible. Maxilla is nothing. You know we have a teeth in upper and lower part of the face like upper jaw and lower jaw. So the upper jaw, the upper region which bears the teeth that is a maxilla. And the lower part of the face or mandible this is a single bone which bears the tooth in the lower region of the face. That is a lower jaw, which is a movable bone. Uh, you know, the mandible is movable. It's a movable bone and this maxilla and mandible will be seen more detail in the anatomical part. In anatomy, we will be studying all the detailed structures of the maxillary bone, mandibular bone, everything. So we have to know the term maxilla, mandible. Next, coming to the term arch. What is an arch? Arch we used to say it for a complete thing. For a maxillary arch means a complete row of teeth. In a you know, in uh, we have specific number of tooth in each arch. For maxilla, we have a specific number of tooth. For mandible, we have a specific number of tooth. For example, in deciduous, we have 10 number of tooth in maxillary arch, 10 number of teeth in mandibular arch. So, arch denotes the a complete line which bears the all teeth in a jaw. We use the term arch. Then what is a quadrant? We know there is an imaginary midline which divides the arch into right side and left side. A arch is divided into two sides by an imaginary midline. We know mostly our whole face or whole body is divided into two sides. Right, right and left side which bears almost the same part like same eyes two sides or the nose which is divided into half similar way you also have the arch which is divided into two parts right and left that each this part right side or left side is called as a quad okay now coming to um, deciduous dentition and permanent dentition so we have two dentitions in our lifetime. It's not just a set of teeth which is uh, completely there for our lifetime. We have two sets of teeth in our lifetime. The deciduous and permanent. Deciduous is the primary dentition. That is the first dentition which is seen in our jaw. Or it is also called the teeth uh, seen primary. We also call it as a, we also call it as a milk teeth or the first teeth which is seen. So, eruption. When does the primary teeth erupt? It erupts in the sixth month, sixth month of the child. When the child is six months, it starts erupting. Each teeth will be erupting at the sixth month and the eruption will continue till two and a half years. Two and a half years. But this teeth is not permanent. The name itself says it's for it. It's primary or a one which is there for only a specific time. The permanent dentition is the one which will be coming next. So this will be starting shedding. They will be shedding. The shedding starts uh, like if this is a deciduous teeth. If this is a deciduous teeth, the root part will be getting resorbed. Resorption of the root will start and uh, at the time the complete root will be resolved and thus the deciduous teeth will be completely gone. And that's the time which is 6 years. Almost at 6 years the deciduous teeth will be completely shedded. So at this 6 years comes the next successor. The successor of the deciduous dentition is the permanent dentition. It's also called as the secondary dentition which comes at the age of 6 years. As this is shedding at 6 years, the eruption will start at 6 years. It's uh, from 6 years to 13 years, the eruption will be continued. But till 13 year, all the teeth will not erupt. Only till second molar, we can have the eruption age of 13 years. The third molar, this will be having a different eruption age, that is 
18 to 25 years 18 to 25 years which have a wide variation now coming to the number of teeth so in permanent only we have 32 teeth like 8 teeth in one side okay so 8 in the other side 8 plus 8 16 16 tooth in one arch that is if it's upper we have 16 in upper if it's lower we have 16 in the lower arch so a total it comes as 32 32 tooth in the permanent whereas in deciduous we have 20 teeth so what are the teeth we will be seeing detail in the next render formula We will be seeing the dental formula of teeth. We have a dental formula for the deciduous dentition, for the primary dentition and a formula for the secondary or the permanent dentition. So this formula denotes the number of teeth which is being present in each dentition. So I denotes the incisor. I denotes the incisor C for canning, PM for premolar, M for molar. So incisor, canning, premolar, molar. These are the four types of teeth which is present in the in our dentition. So in deciduous we know we have 20 number of teeth and 5 in each quadrant. So in this five we have two incisor, one canine, no premolar and two molar. Two incisors, central incisor, a lateral incisor, one canine and two molars. First molar and a second molar. Now to the permanent dentition we have two incisors, one central incisor, one lateral incisor, one canine, two premolars. First premolar, second premolar, and three molars. First molar, second molar, and third molar. That is, we have eight teeth in one side. So, eight teeth in one side, eight teeth in the other side, making it a total of 16 in one arch. So, a total of 32 teeth. So, now we will be seeing about the two numbering system. So, we have three tooth numbering system. The first is the universal numbering system followed by Palmer and Sigma denotation and then FDI system, Federation and International. So first coming to the universal numbering system, it was given by ADA, American Dental, American Dental Association in 1975. So here for primary and for secondary we have separate numbering systems for primary we have as we know it is 20 number of teeth and dividing upper lower arch and to right and left quadrants here for primary dentition they used alphabets A, B, C, D alphabets are used from A to T so we know taking this as right side and this as left side, upper arch, lower arch. The numbering is starting from the maxillary right, second molar. A, then B, C, D, E. We know each quadrant has five number of teeth. Then F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q. R, S, T. Starting from the maxillary right second molar, continuing to, to the maxillary left second molar, then to the mandibular left second molar, and last to the mandibular right second molar. So the sequence follows this direction. Clockwise direction. The numbering follows a clockwise direction. That is, for example, if we say N, it denotes the mandibular 
left lateral incisor. If it is E, it denotes a maxillary right central incisor. If it's R, it denotes a mandibular right canine. Then coming to the permanent dentition, we know we have 32 number of teeth. And here we use number 1 to 32. Same direction we go. We use the clockwise direction starting from the maxillary right third molar. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Continuing to the left side of the maxilla. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You know, each side 18. Then coming to the mandibular left side. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 30, 31, 32. Okay. So if this also follows a clockwise direction. So now example number 15. It denotes the axillary left second molar. Number 27, it denotes the mandibular right canine. Number 21, it denotes the mandibular left second premolar. So, these are the both systems in for deciduous and for permanent. Now, it is very easy to communicate, right? If we see a specific alphabet or specific number, a specific teeth is being recognized. And there is very less of uh, less chance of uh, mistake in this. And the data entry was very easy with the universal tooth numbering system. So what are the disadvantages? It is very difficult to uh, visualize graphically. And we need more practice. For example, it is very difficult for me to remember all these numbers. It is very difficult for me to remember all of a sudden which number refers which tooth or which alphabet refers to which teeth. That are the disadvantages. And now we will be seeing the Next, so next, the Sigmondi and Palmer notation. This was given by the Austrian dentist Sigmondi in the year 1861, and it is initially used for the permanent. It was initially given and given for the permanent dentition, and later it was adapted for the primary in the year 1874. And finally recommended by ADA in the year 1947. So, in this sigma D we have to use four symbols. The first one, for the maxillary right side we use this symbol. For the maxillary left side, this symbol. For the mandibular right side, this symbol. For the mandibular left side, this symbol. Now we will be seeing for the Deciduous dentition. So for the deciduous dentition we use A, B, C, D, E. Letter C. We use these four, five letters for the deciduous dentition. This in, denotes an incisor, central incisor, lateral incisor, canine, D for the First molar, E for the second molar, like this. A, B, C, D, E, A to E, A to E, A to E. For example, if you want to see the maxillary left, first molar. First, for maxillary left, you take the this symbol. First molar, the letter is D. Next, mandibular right, lateral incisor, mandibular right, you choose the symbol first. Lateral incisor is P. Maxillary left, can I? Maxillary left symbol, can I? C. This is for the deciduous. After deciduous, now you see the permanent. So for permanent and 
residues we saw it is alphabet A to E in permanent number 1 to 8. So we know each quadrant has 8 number of teeth. So similar way they divide it 4 quadrants and number 1 for the central incisor, 2 for the lateral incisor, 3 for the canine, 4 for the first premolar, 5 for the second premolar, 6 for the first molar, 7 for the second molar and 8 for the third molar. So each number denoting each teeth. Same number for each side from 1 to 8. Now example. Maxillary left. Second premolar. The premolar, second premolar number is 5. Maxillary left. Simply as this. So second premolar we can go with the number 5. Mandibular right. Third molar, mandibular right, the symbol is this. Third molar is 8. Mandibular left, canine. Mandibular left, canine is 3. Now, maxillary right, second premolar. Maxillary right symbol, second premolar number is 5. So, this is how sigmatic permutation is used. Now, advantages of this is, it is very simple and it is very user friendly. Whereas the disadvantage is, it cannot be conveyed verbally. The coordinates cannot be conveyed verbally. And it was not compatible with the computer and with other processing systems. Now, we will see the next numbering system. Numbering system, that is a FDI system, the most commonly used tooth numbering system, that is the Federation Dental International FDI system. It was adapted by FDA in the year 1970 and then later it was accepted by WHO and the International Dental Research. Now, the FDI system is a two digit system. Like we have two digits which will be representing a single teeth. The two digits together will be representing a single tooth. So, it's a two digit system. Now, we have separate for permanent and primary dentition. So, first we will be seeing for the permanent dentition. In the permanent dentition, in this two digit, we have a first, one first digit and a second digit. The first digit is the one which should be representing the quadrant. Like each quadrant, we have a specific number. For the maxillary, right it's number one for maxillary left it's number two for mandibular left it's number three and for mandibular right it's number four so this one two three four which i have written in blue color the blue color ones are the quadrant number that is the first digit here you can see all the teeth in the first quadrant are in one starting with one so, one represents the maxillary right side and the first digit is the quadrant. The second number represents the teeth. That is, here 1 is the central incisor, 2 is the lateral incisor, 3, 4, canine. premolar, 5 for the second premolar, 6 for the first molar, 7 for second molar, 8 for third molar. So, the numbers which I have written in black, these are the tooth numbers. So, 1, central incisor, lateral incisor, 3, canine, 4, 5, the two premolars and these three are the molars number 6, 7, 8. So, when you read it together, you have to read it as not 11 but as 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. So, similarly, when you come to the next quadrant, that is the maxillary left also, we have a first digit which is representing the quadrant. Maxillary left will be represented by the number 2. Then we have the next numbers, 1, 2, 3, depending on the tooth. In 
the third molar 8. Similarly, it continues to the third quadrant. 3, 1, 3 represents the mandibula, left side, then 1, 2 till the last molar. Then coming to the mandibula right side, the right quadrant is represented by the number 4. So similarly, it is starting from the maxillary right side 1, then 2 coming to the maxillary left side, then from the maxillary left side third molar going to the mandibular left side third molar and ending in the mandibular right side third molar. Here also it comes in a clockwise Rotation. Just remember it comes in a clockwork rotation starting from the maxillary right side and ending in the mandibular right side. The similar one in deciduous dentition. Now I will give you the examples. Now here example. Now you have to see the say mandibular left second premolar. Mandibular left second premolar. So coming to left side mandibular left the 1, 2, 3. The quadrant is 3. Tooth number for a second premolar is 5. So it is 3, 5. Now next, if you want to say maxillary right first molar, maxillary right, maxillary right, when you come, this is the first quadrant. So first digit is quadrant. Now first molar, first molar number is 6. So write it as 6. It is 1, 6. Now, one more example to find out. If you, are, if you want maxillary, mandibular right, second molar, mandibular right, the quadrant is 4. First digit is 4. First molar, the number is 6. So it comes as 4, 6. So next come to the deciduous tradition. Deciduous dentition, FTS system, deciduous dentition. So, as we saw in permanent dentition, we have uh, quadrant, and, uh, num quadrant number as first digit and tooth type as second digit. There in permanent, we saw quadrant equals 1, 2, 3, 4. In deciduous, the numbers are 5 for the maxillary right, 6 for the maxillary left, 7 for the mandibular left, and 8 for the mandibular right side. Then, second digits, these are first digits, 5. 6, 7, 8. Second digits, 1 for the central incisor, 2 for the lateral incisor, 3 for the canine, you can see, 4 for the first molar, 5 for the second molar. So it's totally 20 numbers of T. So it's Starting uh, similar to the permanent, starting from the maxillary right second molar, continuing to the maxillary left second molar, then to the mandibular left second molar, and ending in mandibular right second molar in a clockwise direction. Now, example if it's maxillary left first molar, maxillary left, the quadrant number is 6. First molar, it's 4. So it is 6, 4. Mandibular right, canine. Mandibular right, the quadrant number is 8. Canine is 3. So it's 8, 3. Now, this is all about permanent condition and deciduous condition, FBI system. Now, now going to the advantages of the FBI system. It's very simple to use, use a, uh, convenient to use and for verbal communication this system is very easy. You can easily verbally communicate the teeth number. And for data entry it was very easy, it was compatible with the computer. Now that's all about the tooth numbering system. Now see you again with another topic in the next video. Thank you.